they take hold of their lives and say, from this day on, I will, I want to change. And that is where forgiveness can heal people. And I'm not saying it always works. It doesn't always work. No, we, Jesus we, said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. And they did a terrible thing to him. Right, who right, 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 ever. right. So now, what has happened is this. <coughs> that we seem to have two contradictory type of statements. One is, he said, look, I am not come to destroy the law. The law, the Hebrew word for law is Torah, meaning the first five books of Moses. Whatever the teachings, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do this. Everything that is there is there, and I'm one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And my understanding of English is fulfill means to fill up, not to take out. When you say you fill up the law, you make it tighter. And I am noticing that that's what he did actually. You see the Jews had a law of divorce. They had a law of divorce. But before Moses, they used to do divorce before Moses, the Jews, these human beings. <laughs> Humankind come together and there's a conflict and there's a separation. So they used to divorce, but now they, the man divorces his wife and uh, afterwards he changes his mind and he goes to his father-in-law's house and catches his wife and so, come on darling, back home. So what for? You divorced me. He said, no, no, no. I asked you to go for a little holiday and now you want to get another husband? Catch her by the hair and bring her back. Now that's the abuse. Yes. The law allows you, if you can't get together, no use hacking at one another or for a hundred years, part nicely. But now, the guy is playing the fools with the law, he divorces and now he goes back. So God Almighty, through Moses, straight tightens them, the law. He said, whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. That's the advanced evolution of the law. That now you put it down into writing, so you can't say, I didn't divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an evol evolution of the law, is evolving. But now, my cousins, the Jews, very ingenious people. So the guy gets married, and he's got half a dozen children through this wife of his. She's not the same anymore. He wants something nice and crisp. So he said, look, there, there is a way out. There is a way out. Moses said, whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. Mm. So he said, right, he writes out a bill, he said, darling, go. He gets somebody else, he gets her into difficulty, and he wants to change again. He said, what did Moses say? He said, whosoever puts her his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. He's within the law. The law says you give her in writing, and that absolves you from other responsibilities. So the guy is now playing fast and loose with the law. There comes along another spiritual physician among the Jews, Jesus. He sees the sickness that the guy is playing the fools, man, he's too damn clever. Mm -hmm. So he takes away the privilege. As a man of God, he has a right. As a doctor, he can change the medicine. You know, he said, now this is the medicine for malaria, quinine. But maybe a time comes, no, quinine is very dangerous. It has other side effects. So he said, now give her panado. He said, right, okay, you change it. The doctor has a right to change. The man of God, the prophet of God has also a right to change. So he takes away that privilege from the Jews. He said, it has been said by them of old time, that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, I'm telling you now, whosoever puts away his wife, save for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever marries her that is divorced, committed adultery. In other words, no divorce. Am I correct, ma'am? No divorce. And if you divorce a woman, and if she remarries, her children are all bastards, and the Bible says, the bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord even to do the tenth generation. Once you are a bastard, your ten generations are bastards. Now, I'm only quoting scripture. This is what the Bible says. The bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord even unto the tenth generation. Do you remember reading that before me? Yes. So that means once you are a bastard, your ten generations are bastards. Just because your husband and you couldn't agree. Yes. And now, you were a young woman in the prime of your life, you made a mistake in your glamour boy, and another guy comes along compassionate and says, look, you are beautiful, you are intelligent, everything, and he said, no, I will give up protection in marriage, but you are committing adultery, and your children are bastards for ten generations. He says, no, you have misunderstood the whole thing. This was a remedy for a sickness. You are playing fast and loose, so now the law is getting tighter for you. 
But Jesus, the same Jesus, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You haven't got the capacity. You are like little children. And the proof of that statement, you cannot bear them now, means you can't grasp it now, is writ large in the New Testament. You read again and again, Jesus tells his disciples, ye of little faith, ye of little faith. How many times? Mm -hmm. Then when he speaks to them, explains to them as if he's explaining to little children, and they can't seem to understand. He said, are you even yet without understanding? And when he's provoked further, he says to his disciples, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I say if he was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed a honorable harakiri. <laughs> everything he tells them, look. Now you ask me, so I will tell you. I say everything he tells them, they misunderstood everything. Yeah. And the proof, I said, I give it to you, in front of you. John chapter 13, at the end. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. And whither I go, ye know. In the way, ye know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. In other words, I assume you understand what I, Mrs. Todd, I'm speaking English, that's your language. You say, I think you understand what I say. So that's what he's trying to say. So look, you understand what I'm telling you. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. The answer? He said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? The man said, look, you know what I'm talking about. He said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. See, Jesus is talking about spiritual matters. His disciples are thinking of geographical locations. They're thinking about Bloemfontein, Kimberley, Nels Sprite. He is talking about spiritual matters. They are thinking, therefore, they say, look, I don't know. I don't know where you're going, and I don't know how to get there. So in answer to that, Jesus says, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Zulu says, too heavy. <laughs> you know, look, he said, look, I am the way. The, if you want to know where I'm going, the way to God is personified in me. Real life is personified in me. Truth is personified in me. Look at me. If you want to go where I'm going, you follow me. You will reach there. It's too heavy. Yeah. So they said, <laughs> they said, look, all this what you're talking about, <laughs> this is hitting over your heads. He said, look, just show us the Father and it suffice at us. All this what you're talking about, fancy things, I don't know what you're talking about. Just show us God and that will give us satisfaction enough. So Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. Why ask us now, show us the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Again, they misunderstood. Everybody, each hundred percent. From the word go, they misunderstood where he's going. Then he's telling, I'm the way, that they misunderstood. Now he said, look, Philip, you're with me for so long. You as a Jew, you ought to know better than that. You know, God is not seen at any time. No man can see God and live. How can you make such a silly request? If you know me, if you understand what I am, you will understand what God is. You haven't understood me, how can you understand God? No, no, he says, he's, he's God. He's the Father. Is that what he said, that he is his own Father? How can he be his own Father? He took his seed and put it into his mother and he came out. No, no, no. I said, look, you see, the trouble is, this Jewish book, the Bible, is a Jewish book, full of Jewish metaphors and similes, of which the Westerner has got no experience whatsoever. Please, forgive me. I'm talking about your DDs. You see, I, mean, I talked to them, you know, your DDs and your professors. I said, look, you haven't got a concept. You are using a Jewish book with Jewish metaphors and similes about which you have no experience. So what was metaphorical to the Jew has become literal to the Greek. And they are the pioneers of that message to the Western world. And you in turn to the Indians and the Africans. You are looking at a Jewish book through Greek glasses. You see the Jews... <laughs> no, please, please. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's allowed. Is anybody Greek here? <laughs> you see, through Greek glasses, you see the Jews had the idea of sons of God. Sons of God mean a righteous person, holy person. Now, a new idea goes among the Greeks and the Romans that their new son of God had just come into Palestine. You know, a man of God. Now, what was metaphorical? Because God has got sons by the tons in your Bible. Book of Genesis chapter 6 is, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them to wife all that they chose. Verse 6 is, and when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and brought children to them, they became great men of old, men of renown. How many sons did he have? In African scenes. Many. Then in the book of Exodus, God says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Jeremiah, says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. Then in the New Testament, we are told as 